This is happiness to be everything at once. Be unblinded, be unlearned, be unbridled and unburned. Hey everyone, welcome back to a brand new episode of Mood Prep. My name is Dave Nixon and uh, today I'm going to do a bit more of a sort of a share. I'm going to, I'm going to go through rather than presenting a concept and idea, I'm going to do more of a, more of a share and a sharing of thoughts um, and, uh, and see if we can sort of track where this conversation is going to go. Um, one of the things that's popped up for me in this last week is this idea that if you have a problem, then you have a goal. Right, and the, the beautiful thing about that is that often we can talk about our problems and get caught up in the problem, and sort of negate the fact that if we have a problem, the problem is only in face of the goal. So if we if we were to overcome that problem, what would we have? It's like, well, some people might go, well, we got a new problem. It's like probably, right? Sometimes achieving what we want is a problem because then we have to figure out what else we have to achieve. It it also gives us an idea of what people focus on, right? And this is an idea of counting and discounting, but. What I mean by that is that if people focus on the problem, that's what's in their foreground, right? And people go, yeah, we need people that focus on the solution. It's like, yeah, we, we want to be able to see the solution. But the thing is that the problem only exists because we're trying to, to do something, trying to get something, right? If the TV is not working but you don't want to watch TV, then you don't have a problem, right? The, if you want to watch TV and the TV is not working, you have a problem, right? So if my goal is not to watch TV, it's pretty simple. If the TV doesn't work, it doesn't fucking matter. And so the thing about it is that this is a really useful tool for us to use in our life, to look in our life and go, okay, well, hang on a sec. What are the problems that I'm, uh, that I'm, I'm, I'm experiencing in my life right now? And what is the goal that they're in, in, they're in face of? Like what, what is it that I'm experience, experiencing that problem because of my pursuit of a goal? And in that case, is, is my focus so much on the problem that I'm kind of forgetting about the goal and how important the goal is and what it maybe will feel like for me, my experience, how it would be for me to actually achieve that goal, right? Whatever that goal may be. And when we do this, we can often start to make, rather than the goal, this big thing that we're pursuing and we want to be in and, and the experience of that and how that could feel and all this sort of stuff, we start to experience the problem as this really big thing and we get confused rather than going this big, hairy, audacious goal as some people call it a BHAG, we start to like do a BHAP, which is a big, hairy, audacious problem. And we start to focus on the problem and it becomes bigger than us. And this is when we're starting to discount what the goal is and count what the problem is. We're also in the face of that, discounting ourselves in the, in, in the face of the problem because we're like, fuck, I don't know what to do with this. I, I can't handle this. Um, this always happens. All this really general language that's not serving you in the face of what it is you want to achieve with the actual outcome, right? The outcome, the goal. Outcome meaning what you want to come out of your actions, your behaviors, your pursuit. And so when looking at this, we have a couple of things to look at in the space of going, well, this problem is this thing that exists outside of me. Sort of. It plays a role in the thing, right? What's your problem? Well, I don't have enough money. Uh, or uh, my family holds me back. Or um, I'm, I'm, I'm not skilled enough yet. And I need to have more certifications in order to be able to do what I want to do. So all of these things, although they have an influence and, and speak some sort of truth to it, the problem is, is that they're all things out in the world, right? And the outside is, is, is rarely ever the problem. Ever. Right? What what we often then think is like, oh, it's me, I'm the problem. It's like, no, no, that's not really the case. That's too general because your toes probably aren't holding you back. Um, you know, your, your, your actual writing down the goal itself and wanting it isn't holding you back. So that's your, you are not the problem, right? And maybe your state, although it may not be resourceful, it, the state isn't the problem, it's the frame that you're holding about the problem that's probably the fucking problem. It's just like, oh my God, it's so you know, pervasive. It's an area of my life. I, I can't seem to break through it. Like, Listen to all the language and all the framing of how the person may be framing their problem. This may be you. And think about it like, you no wonder you have the fucking problem. is because you're so focused on how fucking good the problem is. It's like in some people, and you, you may have heard me say this plenty of times before, 
They want problems because when they complain about problems, they get sympathy from someone. It's the only time they ever get fucking attention. So they've been trained to have problems to feel good about themselves because it means someone cares about their shit. And then later on in life, they realize no one gives a shit and then they just become annoying. Total judgment on my behalf. But the idea there is looking at this and going, the, the solution exists initially in the reframe, right? And then the behaviors from the reframe and rather than saying, for example, um, you know, this, this problem is too big or um, I don't know what to do with this problem. Like, that's, that's a statement. There's, no, there's nothing on top of that. Your brain doesn't go, come on, buddy. You can come up with a good idea. You've been resourceful. You've kept me alive this long. Your brain won't do that. Your brain's like, yeah, you're a fuckhead. You know, you've always done this. I hope you're not listening to this with the kids in the car. And, <laughs> anyway, the reframe comes from this idea of going and seeing the the framing of the problem, right? Catch yourself in that moment. This is the awareness. We can't do anything without the awareness. Catch yourself and go, okay, so um, holding the frame, um, I can't do anything about the problem, is probably going to presuppose that you really can't do anything about the problem. So it's like, okay, well, let's say if we could play a game, what could you do about the problem if you were to give advice to someone else? That's a pretty open-ended question, but most people would come up with an answer. Another one is like, you can't do anything about the problem. It's always existed. It's like, well, I didn't say it always existed, but it's really big and I don't know what to do. It's like, right, I hear that. Now, if you could do something, what could that do? What, what, what is a time where you had other ideas around getting over problems. Was there ever a time where you had the same frame where you were like, you know, I, I simply um, don't know what to do with this problem. It's too big and you got you got through it. It's like, yes. It's like, well, what changed? And, and go back to that and have a bit of a play with that because the, the solution often, and like I said, starts with the framing. And the framing being around, well... Firstly, I mean, is it, is it empowering you? I know that can kind of sound corny. It's like, this needs to be empowering for your future. But what I'm really saying there is that, like, if it's a disempowering statement, like, A, do you want to be around people that constantly disempower? Because right now, you're being one of those people and you're, you're hanging around yourself. So that's one. It doesn't mean that you just say positive things and better things happen in life. It's going, you're literally not doing what's in your power to enable you to move through this challenge and it's not to say that you, that it's not challenging or it's not hard and that you know you're not going to be tired from it and all that sort of stuff that's 100 percent true and it's noble to move through pursuits like this but it's kind of the reason why you fucking decided on the goal in the first place because not everyone has it right we we pursue things that are challenging because we grow from it because we achieve from it because there's this inherent worth that we achieve and we feel or we think we have or whatever from pursuing noble pursuits and so we kind of in a roundabout way asked for these difficult things we did not even a roundabout way directly ask for problems when we say we have a goal then there's going to be things that arise that allow us to be able to sharpen ourselves and our character and strengthen our ability as we move towards pursuit of the goal if it was easy you wouldn't fucking enjoy it and it's that kind, it's pretty fucking simple in that sense of going, if it was too easy, well, then anyone could do it. But not only anyone could do it, if it was too easy, then I would find no challenge. There'd be no worth. There'd be no struggle. There'd be no achievement at the end. And so these problems are blessings because they, they support your growth. However, if all we can see is the problem, then maybe your goal was to have a problem and not the actual goal team on that note i'm out thank you very much for tuning in i hope you got benefit out of this podcast if you did i love to hear about it in the facebook group mood prep online um otherwise until tomorrow peace and pizza kick today in the dick slay the dragon i'll see you soon be everything be unblinded be